def condition. So if this condition is true, this definition will get executed. If condition two is to, uh, uh, true, the, this definition gets executed. Note we are not mentioning any uh, definition type here because where you specify the option, that is the definition type. And notice we have prefixed it with an exclamation mark. All the options are specified and evaluated in the order to arrive at a final set of attributes. So how it goes is condition, it checks all the conditions in the loop. Condition 1, true or false, true, still it goes for the second condition. True or false, false, condition 3, condition 4. Each and every condition is evaluated. So this is an example of an optional case. So uh, when uh, in this example the default set has is default value. Uh, option 1, sample option 1 has an ex uh, a condition of uh, an output uh, of a condition has a condition. 2 has a condition, 3 and 1 has the same condition and 4 has a separate condition. So in this case, if condition 1 is true, this means that 1 and 3 condition, uh, definition 1 and 3 both can be executed. So the condition, uh, condition at option 1 is value from sample switch one set as so that will get executed and at three also we have a set as now this field cannot have two set as so what will happen is only the last one value from sample switch three will get executed and one will not get executed and in case of two the set as value from sample switch two will get executed in case of fourth condition getting satisfied the setters will remain as default value but the color of the text would be orange so that's how the optional case works now coming to the switch attribute modifier the switch case attribute is similar to the option attribute but reduces the code complexity and improves the performance of the tdl program the option attribute compulsorily evaluates all the conditions of all the options provided in the description of code and applies those which are satis which satisfy the evaluation conditions and this makes the code very difficult for the performance because if you have 25 options it is going to execute it is going to evaluate all 25 conditions the attribute switch can be used in scenarios where evaluation is carried out only till the condition is satisfied so the moment the condition is satisfied the rest of the conditions in the list will not get executed at all so apart from this the switch can also be grouped by using a label so you as in companies we have various departments right people of same nature of work are department together similarly in switch uh, definitions with the similar kind of conditions can be grouped together and one of the the one of that satisfying condition will get executed so now with this condition so this is an example a visual view of this this is group or case one so it has some conditions in option as you could see although the condition was true it was going for a check for the second condition in this case what will happen is in the first group if the first condition is true, it will just loop out of the condition. If first is not true, then only it will go for the second condition for evaluation. 
and this will continue all till it gets the true value. If it does not get the true value, it returns the default value. However, the moment it gets the true value, rest of the conditions aren't evaluated and just looped out. Similarly, will happen for the next group and the next group and the next group. So you can have multiple groups formed in a definition. So here we have given an example of a group. So in this case, one, in this switch case, if this condition sample switch one is true, the second one, the second year, will not get evaluated at all. However, similar with the case 2, if worst one is true, this will not get evaluated at all. That is how it works. Now, it is grouped based on this label case 1 and case 2. Uh, this label can be anything. However, uh, as we as we are developers we have given some static names like case 1 and case 2 you can provide any alpha alphanumeric names but please ensure that you group them properly because in case you give them different different names to each label to each switch so you say case 1 case 2 case 3 case 4 then it is as good as writing option right so if you can see note here uh, for switch 1 and switch 2, we have same conditions of providing a set as and for 3 and 4, we have given different colors. So, the condition of the same, uh, the output of the same nature have been grouped together and the output of the same nature has been grouped in part 2. So, this is how the switch case works. Then we have some special symbols. Dollar, double dollar, add, double add, hash, double hash, colon, uh, double colon, sorry, semicolon, double semicolon, slash, asterisk, asterisk, slash, plus, exclamation, asterisk, and underscore. So, we do have a separate entire topic on this. That's the next thing that we are going to do. So, uh, do not worry about this. Then we have some actions. TDL is an action driven language. Actions are activators of specific functions with a, def a definite result. Actions are performed on two principal definitions that is the report and the menu. An action is always associated with an originator, request or, uh, or for, and an object. All the actions originate from menu, key and button. An action is evaluated in the context of the requester. So, where the key is performed, where the action is performed and the object. Again, we have a detailed chapter on actions in TDL. So, we do not worry about this. So, the syntax is very simple. Action, colon, action, name. And depending what the action is, the parameters will follow. Then there are functions, uh, there are some predefined functions for which we have seen the list and we have user defined functions. Again for user defined functions, we already have a, uh, we have a recorded session on TDL procedure, uh, TDL procedural. Please refer to that recorded session for more details on user defined functions. Uh, predefined functions are the functions that are provided by the platform and then this is available in the Tally developer uh, function browser. Uh, user defined functions are the, uh, are the procedural part of the TDL. And user defined functions allows the application programmers to develop their own functions for achieving the functionalities required by them. You can loop the conditions or the statements. You can uh, allow the evaluation, uh, evaluation of statements based on conditions. So there are n number of things that can be done by user defined functions, uh, also known as TDL procedure. Then talking about the data types. So data types in TDL specify the type of data stored in the field 
and the storage. TDL being the business language supports business data types like amount.